Hello, how are Hi. you? Welcome, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. This is going to be fun. Well, yeah, I don't know, you know, it's such a strange time out here with people feeding families and stuff. So I don't know if we'll get any kids on, but even if we don't, um, I would like to just kind of close it out with you and talk to you about the book and about what you're doing, your next big adventures. And uh, we'll draw for the winner of our, of our door prize or not door prize, but coloring contest prize regardless. So. Um, okay, good. I'm, I'm being backed up by my dog here. Pepper, what are you doing? Okay. Well, I was going to have Pepper on, Pepper, oh. first lady book. Pepper, but she is just, she is not in the mood. So it's just not happening. <laughs> I should have had Izzy come. She would have yeah. like sit there. But yeah. I'm well, off. And realistically, Ludi would be the better pick, but cause she's so much better behaved, but she's, um, she's a little down in her hips right now. So it was a little much of okay. a walk for her. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're definitely a dog community. <laughs> oh, great. Well, you know, I love hearing that. Yeah. Well, I have um, four mini dachshunds in a, in a pit mix, so. <laughs> oh, my. You've got a pack. <laughs> it's a zoo. <laughs> um, my husband and I both brought dogs to the family, so, you know, there it is. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, right? Those are the best families. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we'll give some folks um, some time to, to get on in case okay. we do. I think we had at least two children who were going to try to log on, but, you know, again, who knows with um, internet issues and everything else, about half of the Zoom meetings I've been on have been 100% successful, but the others can be a little bit um, wild. So I think we're going to go live on the parks page, and we'll probably pick up some folks uh, watching there so we can just, if nothing else, have a conversation with you. Um, oh, great. Please. Okay. Oh. Um, so welcome everyone to a conversation with uh, award-winning and notable, very kind author, Bruce Cameron. Bruce, thank you for joining us. <laughs> I don't know how kind I am, but thank you for having me. We think you're very kind for, for uh, donating your time and resources to help us out in the COVID-19 pandemic to have some kind of engagement for our parks department. Um, when everything had to shut down and you're not allowed to do the outdoor things, the playgrounds and the aquatic facilities, you, the parks department kind of immediately switched gears and said, well, how do we engage people in our community and what better way than reading? <laughs> I think it's brilliant. I love the idea. Certainly uh, when I was a kid, uh, my nose was always pegged into a book. And so this made perfect sense to me. Yep, same here. I was always in a book and I still am always in a book when I'm not in, in City Hall doing my thing. I even have books lying around City Hall just in case I have a spare moment, but um, <laughs> it's always exciting. Well, we're here with Marissa Knoble as well. She's our parks director. Hey, Marissa. Hi. Um, she's been uh, very excited and kind of managing some of the Facebook um, group page along with the assistant parks director and our media director, Leah, Leah Lau. So, um, we really appreciate you helping us out. I guess I'd just kind of like to start off to see if we have any, we might not have any kids that are able to make it on today, but um, I'll just start off by asking, Bruce, what is the, what is the value of reading to you? What makes, um, I mean, you're an author, you've written all these books, but what makes the reading part of it so exciting for you? Well, uh, I think my love of books starts with uh, storytelling. I love a good story, uh, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. But there's, there's a really, if there's an important thing about reading that I don't think gets communicated very often, which is the, the more you read, the, the better able you will be to express yourself uh, in written and uh, verbal communication. And um, I've, got a, I've got a son who is an officer in the army. I've got a daughter who is a police officer. Uh, and I've got a daughter who is an accounting manager and all three of them excel at their jobs because their father <laughs> forced them to read when they didn't want to. They all love books now and they all have books open all the time, just like you. But that, um, but because of that, just because of their exposure to reading when my, my daughter has to turn in a police report, uh, she gets compliments from the prosecutor on how well written they are. And when my son uh, was briefing his squad, 
uh, he got high marks from his commanding officer for how he was able to succinctly put all of his thoughts together. So um, reading is fun. Reading takes you to new worlds. Uh, reading is, can expose you to uh, fantastical places. But what reading is doing meanwhile in the background is programming your brain so that you're better able to process our common language, which will help you no matter what your job is. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Marissa, uh, you got to read one of the chapters of Bruce's book, Lily to the Rescue, with your dog, Izzy. Yes. Um, what was your favorite part of, of the book? Let, let Bruce know what you like best about it. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So I had a very unique situation when I read that book um, because I used to work in an animal rescue at J.B. Ogle, which is our local county shelter here. And I think just realizing that like I never realized that like we have um, special cats and dogs that kind of just they live at the shelter because of circumstances and stuff in that nature and I never really realized just how like you know just like Lily how they are used in such a unique way um, within the animal shelter and so I, I really kind of bonded well with that book because I was just like you just you don't realize just how much animals teach you, um, even though they don't get to talk, um, just how much of a um, knowledgeable experience it was for me. So I can't really pinpoint one exact moment. I think the crow and picking up on the shiny things was kind of cool, but that was just because I've also um, have helped pet sit in the past. And so the birds are kind of a unique situation as well. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's funny how uh, how much I adore Lily. And in all the books that I've written, it's it's Lily's comprehension of what's going on is is not exactly true to what's really happening. <laughs> and yet Lily, um, she sort of blunders into situations where she winds up providing an almost miraculous amount of help. Uh, very often not really understanding how unique she is. And I, I just love that about her. Bruce, you um, you write from Lily's perspective so creatively, and it feels like you're really in tune with dog language and and uh, what she might be thinking. How do you uh, prepare yourself for those of our viewers and the children who have engaged with your book who might want to one day write their own book or explore creative writing? Talk to us a little bit about how you get in that mindset and and what you do to um, kind of research for your books and and make them have that unique voice. Yeah, I mean, they're uh, getting into the character. You can walk around the house with a tennis ball in your mouth. Uh, <laughs> you know. have to try that one. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose. I suppose you could walk around lifting your legs on things. I, I, I think that uh, for me, the, the the challenge for writing the Lily books is that I write other dog books. I wrote a Dog's Purpose. Uh, which is a three book series now. I, I wrote A Dog's Way Home, which uh, that was made into a movie uh, as well. And um, the challenge is making the characters different enough from each other so that they're unique, so that I'm not just writing the same character in different circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, to get into the mind of Lily, I just found myself so attracted to the idea of here's this uh, joyful, happy, optimistic animal who doesn't recognize anything bad because how could anything be bad everything is so wonderful and uh, she's so excited to go on a car ride and so excited to get where they're going and so excited to go back I just I just find that getting into the mindset would just be to say well so what if what if absolutely nothing bothered me what if I was always happy all the time what would that be like and that's the character of Lily yeah, and I think her name is very appropriate too. I, it's such a cheerful kind of innocent name, Lily. You know, I like it. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Ah, Ellie. Hey, okay, it looks like we're being joined by Ellie. Hi, Hi Ellie. Ellie. Hi. Is Sam with you? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Um. Great deal. Well, I think Ellie's microphone is on mute at the moment, but 
Um, Ellie, I'll let you think about a question that you might have for, for Bruce. Cameron, who's the author of the book that you've been reading, Ellie's been one of our very dedicated, I see a cat back there in the background. <laughs> um, Ellie's been one of our dedicated um, young readers and has been very active in the program. And so we're very fortunate to have her. Um, Ellie, oh, if you can I'm see Ellie on Friday as well, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, Ellie will participate in the interview that we're doing on Friday. Um, Ellie, what, what, do you have a question that you want to ask um, Bruce here as the author of the book? Is there anything that you want to know about Lily or his other books? She's on mute, so I don't know. I have a sense of, is it on tape delay? Because I almost, I heard myself talking when she, when Ellie came on. It was really strange. I'm sorry, it's yeah. echoing. I can't really hear very well. Um, Ellie, what, I think she must be watching the Facebook feed and ah, right, there's and there's a delay. delay. That's okay. We're trying to get some adult assistance there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sorry about that. That's okay. I mean, technology is not our greatest like issue. <laughs> Ellie, did you know that I wrote a book called Ellie's Story? Did you hear uh, that? No, that's cool. That is cool. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what it looks like. I don't have, I'll find it. I'll get a copy. Um, so Ellie, what grade are you in? Um, fifth grade, I just finished fourth grade and I'm on summer break right now. So I'm oh, really excellent. Fifth grade. So you're like what, 18, right? Is that how old you are in, in fifth grade, 18? I think a dog 10 on the 28th. <laughs> okay, that's close. <laughs> Ellie. Oh. oh, it's a German Shepherd. Yeah, a little German Shepherd puppy. Uh, I think I know what Ellie needs for her birthday now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's great to have you here, Ellie. Ellie, what was your favorite part of the book? Um, I like the whole book. I like the whole book. <laughs> Me too. It's, it's okay. Like I really like answer. <laughs> Great answer. That's so much fun. Yeah, um, the idea of the of the crow, um, you know, I've I we have I've I've never lived in a place that didn't have crows, uh, which is I don't know if that's true. If they're just everywhere. I don't know that thing, but I do know that they're extremely intelligent, <clears throat> and they learn from watching each other and they they will often huddle together and this and it seems like they're discussing uh they're discussing something when they're like like some some uh, crow will successfully uh find food and it seems like they huddle together and and they talk about where the food is and so they all and then they all go to the food it's just it's it's really fun i mean it's really amazing stuff so i wanted to have a crow and casey the crow is a re what we would call in TV writing a recurring character, which means that Casey isn't in every single episode, but uh, but Casey comes back every once in a while and always gets mentioned. Casey, the, there are eight books in this series. By the time it's all all said and done, I'm working on number seven right now, and and two are coming out in July. Uh, so there'll be eight books total in the series, and Casey's in about half of them. So I loved being able to write about Casey in the first book. That was fun. Um, one of my mom's colleagues is, is his name is Casey. Oh, cool. Casey, Ellie, I'm just pretty much tracking you everywhere you go. I'm just <laughs> like, oh. yeah. Do you have a friend named Maggie Rose? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, well, you should get one. <laughs> well, my cousin's name is Maggie, so I guess that works for something. Yeah. So there you go. Well, here's something interesting about Maggie Rose. So uh, my, my daughter runs an animal rescue in Denver called uh, Life is Better Rescue. And uh, I'm on the board of the, of the rescue and we have a fundraiser like the, you know all charities. We have a, a fundraiser once a year. And one year we auctioned off the right to name a character in one of my books. And uh, this man outbid everybody. And uh, so his check, of course, went to the animal charity to help support animal rescue. And his daughter's name was Maggie Rose. And he said, you know, will you name the character Maggie Rose? And I said, you got it. But it, 
it didn't happen that it was just one book. So she's, so her name is in eight books now. I just think that that's really a, a fun way that I got across that character names. Character, character names are always uh, kind of uh, difficult for me. I, I create the character and then the name just sort of seems to fit. Uh, this one, though, was named after my wife's first dog, Elia. Elia means moose in Swedish. And that's my, this is my visual aid. That's my wife. And uh, so her, her dog was nicknamed Ellie. Ellie was a Doberman. This is a German Shepherd, but uh, that's how we came up with it. It wasn't because of you, Ellie. Although, if I, had I met you, I probably would have named Ellie after you. And you, you can tell your friends that I named it after you. I think they won't. <laughs> Um, Ellie, there's a lot of uh, stuff that goes in there with this, with Maggie Rose in the book and everything. Um, have you given any thought yet to kind of what you want to do when you grow up or if you want to be involved with animals? Well, I know that when I turn 13, I can volunteer to help with the animals at the zoo, the Louisville Zoo. So I'm definitely going to do that when I'm 13. Good. Marissa, don't you have some experience doing yeah, that? Yeah, hit me up. Um, when I was 13, I actually started at the volunteer at the Louisville Zoo and did the volunteer program up until I was about 20. So um, I'll definitely be able to help you kind of weave your way through. But it was a blast. Um, it's a lot of cleaning up and stuff like that. But um, it definitely taught me a lot. So Wonderful. True, true story. I actually taught Marissa in college. Um, oh, no, we don't have to go through that. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I actually taught Marissa in college her first semester or freshman year. And um, the thing, and I was looking for someone one weekend to help me watch my animals. And as I mentioned, I have a lot of dogs and um, they're a little spoiled. And Marissa in that semester did this great speech on how to clean a gorilla cage because she was volunteering at the zoo. And so after the semester was over and I was getting ready to go on my trip, I thought, you know, I'm going to call that Marissa girl up because if she can handle gorillas, she can handle my dogs. <laughs> so so. That's, that's originally how I met Marissa. So, you know, but you never know, Ellie, you may volunteer at the zoo and make some kind of lifelong connection that you don't even realize. So nice. good. Or at the very least, maybe you could bring the gorilla home for the weekend. You could sleep sleep at the front I mean, of your bed. I tried. It did not work well for me, but I didn't. <laughs> that doesn't sound like the best idea. <laughs> <laughs> I would recommend a meerkat. Meerkats or penguins are easy to squish into your pocket. So. <laughs> Great tip. I would rather do something smaller than a gorilla. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. I, a, well, I have a decent sized dog. Her name is Katie and she'll uh, jump on my mom to wake her up in the morning. She's really heavy and I don't want a gorilla doing that. <laughs> yeah, that oh, yeah, probably right. really bad. You have a kitten too, it looks like. Was that a kitten in the background? I have two cats. Both are boys. Uh, that one's Leo. I have another black cat. Um, his name is Socks, and two dogs. One is Lucy. She's a chug, which is a Chihuahua pub mix. <laughs> wow. And um, a Labradoodle, which is a lab and a poodle mix. Very Wonderful. Nice. What's your Labradoodle's name? Katie. Katie. All right. Um, Fantastic. Bruce, what would be your next recommendation for, for people like Ellie? And uh, um, I mean, where should they go next to, to engage with some of your stories in your books? What might be the most logical next step for them? Um, well, Lily to the Rescue is a series um, and you don't have to read them in any, any order, uh, but, it, but it helps to have read the first one first, I think. And then, um, you know, you're, Ellie, you're 10. Uh, you could easily read Ellie's story, and uh, Ellie's story uh, is one of a series of books that I've written uh, uh, about different dogs. There's uh, uh, Bailey, which is, ba that's Bailey, Bailey, Bailey from the movie. That's about a boy and his dog, and uh, Molly's story, that's basically a girl and her dog. Uh, Max is a little dog in a big city. It's funny, 
Yours is a yours is a uh, chug, and he's a chorky. He's a combination Chihuahua Yorkie mix. And uh, Shelby's story is a little different because Shelby is based on a true dog. When when we made the movie A Dog's Way Home, we decided that all the dogs needed to be rescue dogs uh, instead of like, like you know dogs that were owned by trainers, which is mostly how it works in Hollywood. So. We did a nationwide search and we found a dog that we really liked down in Na down outside of Nashville, out, out way out uh, in the country. And we, we flew down there and we went and met this dog, Shelby. And Shelby had been living in a landfill. Shelby was literally a junkyard dog and had, um, she had fleas and she had parasites and she was starving. Uh, and yet, and we don't even know if she, she knew any people at all, but she was so wonderful and so kind and so immediately willing to please that we knew we had the right dog to be the star of our movie. So she is the star of A Dog's Way Home. And that's, that's Ellie, or sorry, that's Shelby. Someone just handed me the book so I can show it to you bigger. That's Shelby and uh, that's a little different uh, and then the, this one, will, this one might surprise you, as long as we're talking about it. This is Lily's story. So what happened was I wrote this story about Lily, about uh, a puppy being rescued and then going to be uh, to to the rescue and living and meeting Maggie Rose and all of that. I wrote this story first, and this is what we call a younger reader book, which means kind of like fifth to fourth, fifth, sixth grade, your your age, Ellie, and. Um, uh, Lily's story was so exciting for me, the idea that there's this dog that helps rescue baby animals. I decided to write the Lily to the Rescue series and, uh, and, we're, and I'm just still going strong. So those are, we call the, the older readers, the younger, the, well, well, they're not older, they're younger readers is literally what they call them. And those are for fourth, fifth, sixth graders. And we call those the puppy tales. The Lily to the Rescue books are called chapter books. They've got more illustrations and they're shorter. I love the illustrations, by the way. They're they're yeah. Uh, yeah. and they're a little shorter. And you're you guys just all read uh, uh, Lily to the Rescue, the first one, and that was just I have to say it was a thrill and an honor, and it was just you know, I laughed out loud with delight when I heard about this. I thought it was just wonderful. We're, we're really appreciative of you allowing us to engage with, with Lily and meet Lily. And I hope that a lot of folks in Charlestown will continue the adventure. I think we even reached out. Didn't we use a section of Bailey's story, Versa, and the activities that we did kind of branched out? We did. Out? We had a couple yeah. different activities that we did. I pulled them up. Um, we did we did an engagement, I think, where Bailey was like helping name farm animals or something like that. Yeah, I think so just to kind of tease out to let the kids know that there are other books available in the series. So oh, there um, it is, it's a daily story and we did that. Yeah. 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 Oh, wonderful. But we, we introduced at least one of, of Lily's friends so that our readers would know that there are other um, adventures for them to have with, with other canine buddies and companions. So fantastic. Yeah. What a great idea. Well, we are coming towards the end here of our time together and we do have another very important thing to do. Marissa, will you show the gift basket? So we did, a, we did a coloring contest um, oh, with Lily pages and the whole thing. we actually had them um, post like colored pictures and then we posted them on the window at City Hall so that everybody could see, you know, um, the kids artwork and stuff and enjoy Lily for the whole month that we did. And so what we did was we put everybody's names who did a coloring contest into a basket and we're going to give them this gift basket that's full of all kinds of doggy paraphernalia. And yeah, it looks stuff. great. Yeah, and so I have the the names here in a basket, and I'm just going to kind of look away like this and pick one, throw them up a little bit. By the and way, the reason I keep looking up is because I have a webcam and I'm using my TV. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, I have, I have a winner, and our winner of the gift bag oh, is I Sam. my brother. Oh, man. <laughs> It's wow. Sam. <laughs> Fantastic. So Sam Cable, you have won the uh, the gift bag there or the basket um, for the coloring contest, and uh, we'll make sure that we get he that to you. A math contest, and now he's winning this. He's getting really lucky. 
<laughs> well, I'm sure he'll share. There's about 40 different things in there. So hopefully he's a nice brother and will. Yeah, he shared his $100 duty. gift card with me and he's oh, probably going to nice. share. Wow. I need, to teach awesome. him, I need to teach mine how to do that because he does not do that at all. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bruce, what kind of final thoughts do you have for us and how would you encourage our young readers here in Charlestown to um, get through this awkward summer where, you know, so much of their activities um, have been disrupted? What, what, what words of advice or encouragement do you have for our youth? Well, I think I would say that, that a book is a, a completely different experience than, say, watching a movie or even playing a video game. Because what a book asks you to do is to use your mind and imagination to make the world inside your head. I can describe a room to you. I can say you walked in and the walls were green and the floor was pink and there was a, a soft chair in the middle of the room. And if I give you that amount of detail, it's up to you to figure out what shade of green and how soft the chair is and, and how big the room is. There's a lot of details that you need to supply and your imagination working like that means it's, it's, it's your world. And even, I mean, I, I love it when people go to buy movies and they are sitting there and they're, as a family, they're all watching the same story. That's great, but I also love it when I see someone just sitting and reading a book because I know what's going on inside them is that they're constructing that world. They're seeing those people, they're listening to them talk and they're assigning the voices. It's all you, when you read a book, you're the creator. You are, you are basically the director of the, the movie of the book that's going on in your mind. So well, my, my urging it to everybody, who, whether you're a reluctant reader or not, is just try taking a look at what a wonderful process it is. Let yourself slide into that world and let yourself get to know the characters. And I think you'll find it's kind of still the most entertaining and wonderful thing you can do for yourself. Definitely. I love reading. I don't think my reading level is fifth grade, though. I'm not sure what it is. Dad, what's my reading level? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I thought it was higher than that or something. It is. You, you, you can read those books. Yeah, I'm pretty sure maybe it was a middle school level, so not too high, but I'd love to read. Great. Well, I love that you love to read, and I encourage you to keep doing it, Ellie. Yeah, same here, same here, too. Um, we, we love that you joined our program, and we love that you've joined us tonight to, to get to meet um, Bruce and, and tell Sam <laughs> he's, he's won a prize, and he, we tell him that he's got to share with you. He's okay? got to share it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I thank you. have to tell him. He's really nice. <laughs> okay, good. good. We're like, yay, time to share. Yay. <laughs> Uh, well, you're an excellent model for, for what we hope that everyone will be watching them. Um, well, thank you so much, Bruce, for joining us, for taking time. We will see you again for, I guess, Thursday, I think, for our interview at noon, something like that. So Wonderful. I think you'll be joining us then as well. So looking forward to that. Marissa, thank you great. for gathering that great prize pack together. And Ellie, thank you. Thank you for engaging with Lily and engaging with us. Um, we're very fortunate to have young people like you in, in the city of Charlestown. So everyone... Have a wonderful afternoon, evening, wherever you are, in whatever time zone you're in. <laughs> and um, we will look forward to more adventures with Lily and her friends in the future. Have a great night, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.